Michael, thanks for joining us. And looking at this year's Asia Global Dialogue, what's for you the takeaway, the thing that you would see as being the sort of the key points? You know, the thing that I noticed most is there's a, there's a lot of good humor and a lot of touching moments, but, and, and they're important in a gathering like this, but I, there's a sense of optimism, at least here in Asia. Uh, we've come through the leadership transition. We survived some volatility associated with the, you know, externalities from the tapering announcement. Uh, Europe got through a whole year without having another sovereign debt, you know, fit. And, um, and so while it's not a pretty picture, you know, from the point of view of growth in the advanced countries, uh, I, I think the feeling is with the new leadership in China, the very big economy, a, a clear uh, set of reforms that 2014 might be a pretty good year for, for Asia and for emerging markets. You're talking about 2014 also in your final session, the final dialogue session at uh, this year's event. Yep. What are the sort of key things that you are going to be really looking at, the, the sort of the elements that you would be focusing on for the next year? Well, I'm the moderator, so, um, you know, and I've got some fairly smart independent people on the panel. Uh, you know, I think they will focus on the opportunities uh, that are going to be increasingly evident. You know, we've, as I say, we've had a big decline in systemic risk. I imagine that that uh, Sam Palmisano will talk about business opportunities in Asia and in technology in general. He'll talk about the importance of really developing new models, new ways of doing business, really running a kind of fully global company, which is something he's engaged in. And, and I think there'll be some talk about, you know, we'll go back around on this question, you know, is there, is there something that's a permanent impairment for uh, other developing countries that don't have China's massive resources to, to power through these transitions? Uh, my answer to that is, is no. I think they're well managed. Uh, they're going to have a lull in growth. I even think China probably will have a bit of a lull in growth as they kind of patiently push through the, the new growth pattern. But, uh, but on the whole, I think it's going to be upbeat. And then, then we'll probably spend a little time wondering, you know, whether the, the developed countries in North America and, and Europe will join the party uh, again. I think the answer to that is, yeah, but with some constraints in America. And I think in Europe, we just have to face the fact that we're in for a fairly extended, tough period of rebalancing. Of course, you have the opportunity to look backwards at 2013 and see the comparisons between 2013 and 2014. And it seems that the emerging economies had a rather patchy year. Is the story over for those developing economies, would you say? No, they're quite capable of, you know, any country is quite capable of self-inflicted wounds and, uh, and falling short of full potential. That, that's for sure. And I think we've seen some of that in India in the past couple of years. Uh, we saw a, a, a pattern of becoming dependent on very low-cost external capital, current account deficits. That, but I think they're taking correct, correct, uh, corrective action. As I say, that doesn't mean that you know they'll be at full potential in 2014. But I don't see yet anything that's fully destabilizing. And the truth is, you know, we got lucky. We got the tapering announcement, which was a shot across the bow, and then it was taken back to buy time to make the adjustment. So in that sense, I think it's good. The other thing that people you know, tend to forget when we sort of think about this country and that country and so on is that we're all connected through the kind of network structure of the global trading and financial system. And the truth is that you know, Europe not growing as a headwind, America growing at sub-potential is somewhere in the middle, China growing at 7%. Is, the, is now the equivalent of America or Europe growing at 3.5%. So that's a great big powerful tailwind uh, that if, it, you know, if the whole thing succeeds will be a, a, a big boost for the developing countries. Michael Spence, thanks for that. Thank you, sir.